Good afternoon and thanks for tuning in to First at Four. I'm Don Jorgensen. And I'm Kelly Volk. More people are flying for Thanksgiving. AAA says about 10,000 South Dakotans will get on a plane for the holiday, which is up by about 6% from last year. The executive director of the Sioux Falls Regional Airport says Thanksgiving travel is getting more popular. Seems like every year now after COVID, um, it's getting busier and busier this holiday season, uh, especially around Thanksgiving. Coming up later on Kelloland News at 5, find out where some travelers are headed for Turkey Day. The annual Jingle Bell run for the Arthritis Foundation is going to look a little different this year. For the past few years, the 5K has been the Saturday morning after Thanksgiving. Well, now it's going to be on Black Friday, the right night, that is, right before the Parade of Lights in downtown Sioux Falls. Organizers say that the event is the Arthritis Foundation's biggest fundraiser, but it also raises awareness about juvenile arthritis. Most people kind of push it off as something that's just going to happen with age. But as many of the kids that will come here on Friday know, it's more than that. It's about pain and it's about, you know, loneliness. It's mental health. It's about everything else. So. Coming up on Kelloland News at 6, Lauren Solick will introduce us to this year's youth honoree for the Jingle Bell Run. South Dakota Urban Indian Health in Sioux Falls is asking for donations for a new event this year. The organization is hosting its first winter gathering for families in the Sioux Falls community. The goal of the event is to send each child home with a gift. Urban Indian Health is looking for donations of new toys, games, activities, and books for babies, toddlers, and teens. You can drop off donations through December 1st at the clinic along West Avenue of the downtown office. They will also accept monetary donations and gift cards. Well, here we are. It's Wednesday before Thanksgiving. The yeah. parking lot is clearing out here yeah. at Carlo. I imagine that's the way it is at a lot of companies today. Yeah, and uh, I think this is our last day of some warm temperatures too. Right? Yeah, uh, just a little bit. We've been uh, keeping an eye on basically the, the fall off the cliff that we're going to be having today from uh, high temperatures we've had this afternoon versus basically every other day that's not today uh, going into just about the end of November. And if you're out toward, oh, I don't know, Terry Peak, for example, or uh, the Southern Hills, for that matter, you may see a little bit of snow by Thanksgiving into Black Friday as well. Uh, right now, that's all we've got in the entire state. 50 in nearby Lead with a northwest wind at 5 miles per hour. Compare that to the 59 that we have here in Sioux Falls with a west wind at 9 miles per hour. That cloud cover has been increasing. Uh, for those of you keeping score at home, average for this time of year is 42 in Sioux Falls. So there's the cloud cover on visible satellite. You can see that uh, gradually building more and more filling in as we go through the afternoon and into the evening as well. But we do have some sunnier locations like down toward winter, for example. They're at 65, uh, 59 in Yankton, 57 here on 51 Mulbridge, 61 Pier, 59 as you head into Rapid City, 54 for Custer as well as Spearfish and Worthington. But uh, regardless, it is warmer now compared to the same point yesterday. And if you're in south central and eastern portions of Kelowind, it is a double digit difference. We're going to basically be putting minus signs next to all of these numbers at the same point tomorrow afternoon as we do get that reinforcing shot of cold air to come in behind a mainly dry cold front that is continuing to push down to the south as we speak. After this front moves through, the cold air is in place. We get another system that's going to clip western and southwestern South Dakota, which is why we actually have a winter weather advisory in place for the southern hills including the Custer area as well as Fall River County. This will go Thursday through early Friday morning. A winter storm watch for western Cherry County west of Valentine for that same time frame. Highs tomorrow I mentioned are going to be noticeably chillier. We're going to be talking about 20s and 30s just about across the board. So you will want to keep that in mind. I know we really haven't been needing the thicker jacket as of late, but you're going to need it for a little while. We'll talk about the rest of your forecast as we head through the hour. Thanks, Adam. Developing this afternoon in southwestern Minnesota, multiple fire departments are responding to a fire at a grain elevator. The fire happened earlier this afternoon at the Chandler Feed Company in Chandler, Minnesota. An official with the company says a grain elevator leg exploded. 
Kelloland photographer Adam Osmus is at the scene in Chandler with someone who witnessed the explosion. Adam? All right, what was on your mind when the explosion happened? Well, at first I wasn't even sure what to think. We thought maybe an explosion, obviously, and we thought maybe two semis collided or something. It was a huge boom. And then the next thing I thought of was, I hope everyone is safe. What did you see when you walked outside at that point? Uh, right after it happened, there were no flames. There was just a lot of smoke, and I suppose it took about 10 minutes before we saw flames. Uh, I've been listening to uh, one of the witnesses in Chandler, Minnesota. Thanks a lot, Adam Osmus, for bringing that uh, report for us. We'll have more coming up later today on Kettle Land News. In the meantime, authorities in Brookings County say two people are in custody in connection with an assault in Volga. Investigators say last night, Damien Red Buffalo and Javon King threatened a person with a gun at the Handymark gas station in Arlington. Deputies say that the two took the person's vehicle and then drove at a high rate of speed to Volga. The sheriff's office says that the two then tried to take another person's vehicle at the Casey's gas station by punching the victim in the face. Authorities say that Red Buffalo and King are now facing additional charges in Kingsbury County for assault, stolen property and gun violations.